It's my pleasure to welcome you to Answers from Scripture. Whether you're just being introduced to the Bible for the first time or you've been studying it for a lifetime, I'm confident that you'll benefit from Brother Mark's passionate explanations for the Word of God. Hey friends, good to see you. I'm Brother Mark, your host for answers from scripture and the question for today are fundamentalist dangerous are fundamentalist dangerous if you do too much digging in youtube you're going to find some people that that claim and very likely were fundamentalists at one time they claim they were that they had been and oh they were hurt because they were fundamentalists and now they're so glad to be free that they're not fundamentalists anymore and it's sad that that's the testimony that they're bringing And I think we can clear it up if we just understand, first of all, what is a fundamentalist? Even the etymology of that word, fundamentalism, was first used for Bible-believing Christians that stood strong on the Word of God long before it was used in any other way. The second problem that we have is that the media has been complicit in trying to make that word derogatory fundamentalist. Anytime something of an, uh, someone from another religion perhaps does something that's extreme or radical or dangerous, they'll say fundamentalist, fundamentalist Muslims or fundamentalist Mormons or fundamentalist this or that or the other thing. And they use the word on purpose, trying to paint someone as dangerous or extreme. But that's not the word Uh, in its original meaning. That's not the intent of the word. So let me just give you just a little bit of a historical background. If you go back to the late 19th century or the 1800s, if you will, there were two men called Westcott and Hort that discovered what we now refer to as minority text manuscripts. They were corrupt manuscripts. And these men decided to retranslate the Bible And a lot of the Bible passages began to be called into question at that time. And there was a huge change, a shift in the paradigm, if you will. And churches began to become liberal and go downhill rapidly as they started to call their Bible into question. Certainly, uh, through hundreds of years, there had been arguments and distinctions of interpretation. But pretty much all Christians agreed the Bible is the infallible word of God. After that, now, not only are people fighting over interpretation, but even fighting over whether or not they believe the Bible was truly the Word of God. And if, is it true in part or in whole? Can we trust it? Is every word true? A man named Ari Tori, who himself waffled a little bit after he'd studied in, in the theological seminary in Erlangen, Germany, but a man who had been exposed to strong Bible-believing fundamentalism and came back and, and kind of settled back into it, he began to get his, his friends who were well-educated, intelligent men to write articles on various subjects of Christianity. And they compiled those together in four volumes. Now, today, usually when you buy it, it's in two large volumes. It, it used to be in four small volumes, but now it's the same books, but they've just compacted them into two large volumes. But those two volumes or four volumes were what they called the fundamentals. That's the name of it, the fundamentals. Why the fundamentals? Because now so many churches were dividing and people accepting this higher critical view of the Bible and becoming liberal and saying, well, we believe this part, but not that part. Uh, We don't believe in the deity of Christ or we believe that Jesus died on the cross, but he didn't rise bodily from the grave. He just rose spiritually from the grave. And all these ridiculous doctrines. Um, And so R.A. Torrey's friends uh, in the early 1900s, in the early 20th century, around 1909, from, from 1908 through 1912, somewhere in that range, they were writing and compiling these important articles, articles on the veracity of Scripture, articles on creation, articles on the deity of Christ, articles on the bodily resurrection. And they called these the fundamentals. And one of the things they were seeking to do was to say, okay, 
Our churches shouldn't divide over every little nitpicky distinction or difference. But we can get along with people if they agree on these certain fundamentals. Let me very quickly refer to two verses of Scripture. We do call this answers from Scripture. A very well-known verse in 2 Timothy 3.16, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. And it goes on to tell you how it's profitable. Every verse in the Bible, every verse of Scripture is inspired, it's given by God, and it's profitable. But I want to read something that Jesus said when he was preaching to the scribes and Pharisees in Matthew chapter 23. And I want to take you to Matthew 23 and verse 23. So give me just a second. I'm almost there. Matthew 23 and verse 23. He's talking about how careful the scribes and Pharisees were to tithe, but they ignored other things. I want, I want to read this. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin and have omitted the weightier matters of the law. I want you to notice that phrase especially. The weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought ye to have done and not to leave the other undone. What Jesus is teaching here is that although all scriptures inspired, some parts are weightier than others. Every verse is true. Uh, the, the verse in Job that says there was a man in the land of us whose name was Job is just as true as for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But the latter verse is weightier than the former verse. Some verses are more important than others. Some are weightier than others. And some we call those the foundational doctrines of Scripture. Or, if you will, the fundamentals. The word fundamentals just means foundational. So if somebody says, I'm a fundamentalist, all that means is that they adhere to and believe in those important core scriptural truths where people said, look, there are all kinds of things in the Bible. Maybe two, two churches differ and one baptizes in backwards and the other baptizes forwards. And that used to be an argument. And, they, and churches divided over that. And they said, let's not divide over every little thing, but let's agree to these fundamentals. And say, if you don't accept these fundamentals, then you're not really a Christian. You're denying the important, the weightier matters in the Word of God. So now back to our question, and we'll wrap it up. But then are fundamentalists dangerous? Well, that depends. It depends on what your fundament is. Fundamentalist just means one that goes back to the foundation. One that holds strong to his faith on those foundational matters, those important things. So if your foundation is one of love your enemy and do good to them and pray for them, the more fundamental you become, the more loving you'll become. If your foundation is lay in wait for them in every stratagem of war and strike terror upon their necks, as it says in the Quran, then the more fundamentalist you become, the more dangerous you become. See, it's not the word fundamentalist that equals danger, but is what is your fundament? And our fundament is the Word of God. And if someone says to you, I'm a fundamentalist believer in the Word of God, you don't have a thing to fear from that person. If he's being honest, you don't. If he truly is a fundamentalist Christian. If somebody says they're a fundamentalist uh, hitman, then maybe you run from that man. Uh, but uh, you can use the word now in any term. You can be a fundamentalist basketball player and you strive to sharpen your abilities in the fundamentals of basketball, the most important elements of basketball, if you will. But that's all it means to be a fundamentalist. And by the way, there were fundamentalists, Baptists, fundamentalists, Methodists, fundamentalists, Presbyterians, fundamentalists, Lutheran, fundamentalists from about every denomination back in that day because they were those churches that said, we don't agree on everything, but we can agree Jesus was born of a virgin. He was the son of God. He died on the cross. He rose bodily from the grave. Those principal foundational things of scriptures. If you believe that, you're a fundamentalist. And I certainly hope you're not dangerous. God bless you. We'll talk about it some more next time. Goodbye. Thanks so much for listening. If you have a question you'd like to have answered, 
mention it in the comments field below or visit us at www.answersfromscripture.online. Thank you.